Bonjour, Mamengwa Ikwe. Bonjour, Nick. We're on the shores of Shell Lake by a big old willow tree. What do you know about this tree? Well, when I moved here in uh, November 2006, I would come down to the beach and I would just walk around and I'd see the late leaves of this tree just swaying. And it was like it was telling me something. And now I'm telling you the story. So I think the tree's been with me the whole time. We're going to do this interview right here under this tree. A week from Saturday on September 25th, you're going to be giving a talk along with some other distinguished people about sustainability and about how to treat the earth. You've uh, been working on butterfly habitat restoration, but the deeper question is what's happening to our food supply, especially with the, the big meat factories out west. You were recently out west. Uh, tell us what you saw with the black Angus. Well, it's interesting because we were, mi uh, we were migrating with the monarchs through Minnesota, Missouri, and then when we got out to Kansas, there was natural habitat growing all along the roads until we hit about the halfway mark in Kansas, when all of a sudden that all disappeared and the killing fields began. And what I mean by that was, is that that's the concentrated animal um, uh, uh, places where the Angus are just left to stand in their own feces without a blade of grass anywhere and it was absolutely deplorable and of course the stench there was horrible from the ammonia trucks that go out to fertilize the soil supposedly but the downside of that is they are totally polluting the soil and eventually not even an earthworm will be able to live in the soil. So we witnessed all this. The monarch diverted at that point because it couldn't possibly live there. There was no uh, biodiversity of uh, nectar plants. Then we hit the monoculture of crops, which was the corn and the milo, which is the sorghum plants. And um, it, Scientific America just came out with the study that uh, n none of the pollinators can, can survive on monoculture crops. And when you think about that, and also being genetically engineered, these are terrible risks that uh, the pollinators are facing. And um, the food should never be treated in this inhumane way, neither the plant world, the living beings, neither the animal kingdom with the meat. And uh, it, re it really was an eye opener to, to see that this is not the way we're gonna go forward into the future, that we have to have grass-fed animals, we have to eat locally, and we probably would benefit from thinking about eating seasonally and respecting all life is that food is a gift to us. It's given to us by the Creator and it should be treated with respect. Joe Salentine was featured in Michael Pollan's book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, which is about uh, how, uh, how poorly we eat and care for the land in this country. Uh, what's uh, Mr. Salentine's message going to be at the LCO Convention Center on September 25th? I think he will talk about the importance of treating animals um, respectfully, that uh, there are benefits to growing food organically without pesticides and herbicides, and that we can feed ourselves locally with our own food base. And I don't know exactly all the things he'll talk about, but I think he'll th show the importance of trying to do sustainable agriculture so that we can have a sustainable living to get to the future. Speaking about local production, the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, Sandy Stein from the Bad River Reserve is going to be speaking about the three sisters. Uh, Tell us about your sister, uh, Sandy Stein. Well, Sandy is our secretary of Happy Tonics, and um, she will speak about the uh, historical significance of planting native crops, the three sisters, and why they counterbalance each other. And um, she'll speak about her own growing experience in 2009. And um, we're really pleased that she's going to bring this side of the presentation forward, because these are all indigenous crops. And that's what we want to support, is indigenous native crops. Your vision for the future of food, food growing in northwestern Wisconsin, what do you want to see happen? 
oh, I want to see us as an um, environmental educational organization working directly with our farmers in order to uh, promote the idea of youth coming to the farms and learning about sustainable agriculture and trying to uh, promote native seeds so we can do um, uh, to distribution around the country of native seed for habitat for the monarch butterfly and to promote native seed to grow food, which is less um, demanding on uh, water because you know we're in a drought and also the water table's dropping. So native crops help to counterbalance that, um, the, the plight of the crops right now. This is Nick Vanderpie and Mary Ellen Ryle, Mamingua Ikwe, on the shores of Shell Lake by an ancient old willow tree for IndianCountryTV.com. Miigwech.